Welcome everyone to Gamer Meld. I know I've been doing a lot of these talking head videos lately, and I know some of you are okay with it, but please understand that it really is because of all of these hardware reviews and everything, and I have a couple videos coming out pretty soon that I've been working on. With that said, I had to bring this to you today, and this is really the only way that I'm going to be able to do it because I actually saw this not too long ago. Or I saw it earlier but didn't fully look into it and I've been working a good bit today. So yeah, I'd be up till probably 3 or 4 working on it if I did any other way. But anyway, let's get to the news. First up for today, we have an article over on WCC F Tech, and it is some pretty big stuff. As you can see right here, Donawa Research, I do hope I'm pronouncing that right, I do apologize if I didn't, D Donawa, um... Either way, they're the biggest retailer in South Korea, which is a pretty big market. So it should give us at least some kind of idea of how well AMD is doing versus Intel. Upon the release of uh, Ryzen 3000, AMD actually sold more than Intel's core processors. They started out at 48.72%. But in the end, after a couple days uh, of the Ryzen 3000 launch, they reached 53.36%, meaning AMD CPUs actually sold more than Intel's, which is a really big deal. Now, I will say that this is a brand new release while Intel's parts have been out for a good while now, so it isn't fully fair to compare, but this is a massive difference we're talking about here. And not only that, but actually in a recent past mark market share report, you can see in Q1 2019, AMD's market share jumped massively. We're talking that it actually got better than it's been in many, many years. So this is obviously a very serious trend. I know Intel is not happy, but of course, don't forget that we do want both of these companies to thrive because if one completely overtakes another, it's going to act this AMD is going to act the exact same way Intel did. Think about it. If you're on top of the world, no one can even remotely compete with you. Why in the world would you invest millions of dollars into innovation, into new products? There's no reason for it. Really any and every human being does that. Whenever whenever you're not having to work really hard for something, you're not going to. And it's it's really a natural problem. Process. So we do want both companies to be competing with each other. And of course, Intel has plenty of money and they will be back at some point fighting up against AMD. But it's great to see this underdog company come back with so much less money than Intel has and really, really fight. Next up, the gentleman with the German channel Igor's Lab was actually able to get his RX 5700 XT to 2.2 gigahertz. And with that, he was able to actually completely beat out the 2070 Super with a max overclock and even got right next to the 2080 in Shadows of the Tomb Raider, which I do believe, yeah, it's an Nvidia title. So that's a pretty big deal. And he was actually able to do it with not too much more power. Now he did have to raise the power limit by 90%, but on average, he sat around 250 watts. Now, Video Cards does explain that he spiked up to 300 and 320 watts from time to time, but the average was 250, which is definitely not bad. Of course, with all of that said, there are a couple things that he needed to do it. For one, he needed this brand new water block that's out, and I will say that it's not cheap, but I'll get into that in a second. Either way, so he did have to water cool it for one, then second, he had to install the soft power play table mod, which is basically a registry mod. It isn't that big of a deal. I do know that quite a bit of Vega owners have used it in the past. And basically what it does is it releases the restriction for power limit that AMD sets on the card when you install the driver. Of course, with this, you do have to be really, really careful. There's a little bit of undervolting involved from what I've seen. And you really have to watch your temperatures. You, Like I said, you have to know what you're doing. A lot of times you can't really keep it this high for long, long periods of time. But either way, that's really impressive. Of course, this brings us back to the price. And it is $170. And for just $100 more, you can get a 2070 Super, though it does beat it. So that is seriously impressive. To be honest, I would really love to get my hands on one of these right now. They're for pre-order. But I'm not going to lie, I would love to do some testing on my 5700 XT. But either way, um, very impressive, very cool. It's really awesome to see just how much overclocking can be achieved. Now, with that said, I did do a video a few days ago where uh, I was going over how to overclock the 5700 series. And basically, I had determined that it was best just to do an auto overclock. And the reason for that, a lot of people had messaged me and let me know, oh, this is so wrong. This is so wrong. Guys, I, I understood that this stuff was out there. And I'm, I'm, I'm not even really trying to defend myself. I'm just kind of explaining why I did the video the way that I did. These are registry hacks. These are certain things that a lot of users really don't want to do. I mean, yeah, you could say that users that are already going to want to overclock 
will want to do that. But at the same time, having to buy the water block, you know, there's a lot of modifications that, that do have to happen. All I wanted to do was a simple overclocking, what I suggest specifically with these cards out of the box. Either way, I just kind of wanted to explain that just because I know uh, some people were really aggravated with that video. And don't get me wrong, I mean, this is super impressive. Like I said, EKWB, if they send me one, I would love to try it out. Anyway, next up for today, for the final bit of news here, the RTX 2080 Ti Super doesn't look like it's going to happen. For those who don't remember, I did do a video um, about it a little while back. Well, it wasn't just the 2080 Ti Super. It was actually about quite a bit of the cards. It was a leak that WCCF Tech had done. And in their defense, almost all of it was completely accurate. But a lot of people have still been asking me about the 2080 Ti Super. And unfortunately, during the uh, Super Press events, they had actually asked, I believe it was Jeff Fisher. Yeah, they had spoken to Jeff Fisher, and unfortunately, he answered no. Of course, that could just be them trying to defend the cards that they're coming out with right now to say, um, well, yeah, there's going to be something a lot more powerful, so don't buy these. But at the same time, such a direct answer really can and probably does mean no. So yeah, while that does it for today, we had some unfortunate news, some great news, Thanks so much for coming though. Let me know what your favorite bit of news was down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.